Hello everyone, it's Ryan Frontline Animal Removal. Today we're going to talk about bat proofing, materials, and the other guys. Now this particular house I'm at was bat proof some time ago. Uh, I have no idea who bat proofed it for, um, but they did a pretty good job, uh, except for the fact that they missed one spot. And the one spot that they missed uh, is a spot that I may have overlooked if I had bat proofed it. So that's why I said it did a pretty good job. Now, if someone had pointed out to them that they missed the spot the bats were back in, I'm sure they would have come out and addressed it and taken care of it. But the house has changed hands a couple times since it was bat proofed, and we have no idea who did it. However, I want to make a comment about the materials that they used. The one material that they used was spray foam. Now, we at Frontline Animal Removal avoid spray foam at all costs. And the reason being is durability. A lot of guys love to use spray foam when bat proofing houses because it's fast and relatively easy to apply. And what makes it relatively easy to apply is you put it into the gap or void and it will expand and fill it up. It can be messy and ugly but it'll work at keeping the bats out. But why I say durability a problem is two things. One, UV. UV radiation will break down spray foam. It's not really meant to be out in the sun. It's meant to be covered up and not exposed to light. So if you're spray foam the exterior of the house, well, sunlight's gonna hit it and it's gonna break it down. And if that spray foam breaks down, it may fall out and the bats may get it. The second issue with durability is mice. Every house gets some mice in. And up here is a prime example. This is a uh, gable, I mean a ridge vent right here. And I can stick my hand in. The reason why I can stick my hand in is because the mouse or the m mice have chewed up all the spray foam that was applied here and now they're back in. There's a couple other spots on the uh, front of the house where I have to address it as well because the mice have chewed holes through the spray foam and the bats have gotten back in. But let me show you what I'm talking about with spray foam durability. <coughs> right here we have spray foam. Here and here, here, all up in here. The problem with it is I just do this and it crumbles and and it falls off. Now a mouse, because they're little rodents that have teeth that never stop growing, they'll chew right through this in a matter of seconds. The other problem with it that I don't like is it's just messy looking. I mean it looks like a bunch of black fungus, sponge, mold, it's just not very good looking. And if I can just take a finger, it's not sharp, it's dull, it's blunt, and just do that, Mice with very sharp little pointy teeth will get through it so fast. So I have to go around and fix all the spots the mice have poked holes in. So you're going to hire a bat company to come in and bat proof your house. One of the questions I would ask that's very important is what materials are you going to use to keep the bats out? If they say spray foam, I would be very hesitant to hire them because there's a good chance that over time, the spray foam will deteriorate and you'll be calling somebody back in to do it over again. Now how I was telling you spray foam looks bad? Check this out. So what they did is they created an exclusion device which is this. That's bat poo underneath here. There shouldn't be that much bat poo underneath here but there is. The reason why this bat poo's here is the bats were getting in on the other side. They're exiting here. The way this is supposed to work is the bats try to fly up into here, but they can't get through the wire. But they leave the wire loose under here so they can crawl through. Uh, and they left this up as a permanent installation. But because spray foam is brittle, we're going to take it down and redo it. So ugly and deteriorating that's why we don't use it